So hello, my name is Nicole Lin. I am an eighth grader at Challenger School and I've been playing the violin for a very long time. I also play the piano as well. So the violin is the coolest instrument because there's a wide range of repertoire. You can play all kinds of pieces, including solos. And if you don't want to show off your talent as much, you can play in orchestra and you can play first violin parts and second violin parts. But if you really do want to show Everyone, give me one second. Looks like the battery died on us. So as I was saying, we have the ability to solo, and if you don't, you can also do orchestra pieces. And it's all available in many musical eras. The violin showed up very early in time, so it's been a long time for a very long time. So you can play Baroque, Romantic, Classical, and also your favorite pop songs as well. And the structure allows the sound to be beautiful and familiar. Um, now I will go over the parts of the violin. So when you really think about a violin, you're probably thinking about the body here. But surprise, surprise, you also have the bow. There's many parts in the bow, but I'll be only going over some parts today. So we have the horse hair, which is this part, um, the stick, the part on top, the screw down here, the fog, and the chip, which is two parts of the stick. Um, so the stick is just actually just the word stick to keep the structure. Um, but the horse hair is, the hair is actually made of horse hair. And if you want higher quality bows, you can get hair from Mongolian horse hair and Siberian horse hair. Now the screw helps adjust the pressure of the horse hair on your violin and you can turn it to relieve pressure and also increase pressure. This changes the sound you make and how loud you'll be playing. And after you're done playing, you should unscrew, unscrew it to make sure that it, there's not too much pressure to make the stick pop out and die. Um, now we have the overview of the body of the violin. The violin includes the strings, the G string, the D string, A string, the E string, the peg, the pegs, all four pegs to tune, um, the peg box, the neck, which I'm holding, the fingerboard, um, the F holes, the fine tuners, um, the bridge, and the body here. Okay, um, yeah, we have four strings, which makes it kind of hard to keep yourself on tune because if you mess up and place your finger in the wrong area, the result will be very bad. And the peg box is just the top section over here that contains all the pegs and pegs. And the pegs will be attached accordingly to the strings. And if you twist the pegs, then you would change the tune of the string. Um, I will not be demonstrating that because I do not want to retune my violin again. And yeah, but sometimes when you do not go off tune as bad, like if you don't drop your violin and the tunes go all crazy, you can use the fine tuners down here, um, which can change the tune like at very minimal amounts. Um, if you're very pro, you do not need the fine tuners. You can only use these, and that's very nice. Um, yeah, great. 
So you have the F hold here, which helps emit the sound, the bridge, which is a small piece of wood that holds up the strings, um, and our buddy went over the five fingers. Okay, now we have some techniques of playing the violin. So we have detached bow stroke, which is basically just detached notes, and which is pretty long, and you use separate up bow and down bows. And, yeah. Now we have the legato bow stroke, which is all the notes, but you play it in one bow. And now we have double stops, which is basically playing two notes at the same time. And we have chords, which is playing four or more, uh, three or more notes in one go. Um, the curvature of the violin does not allow us to play all three notes at once, so we pretend that we're actually playing all three notes at once. We have staccato, which is shorter versions of the detached bow. And we have pizzicato, which is plucking the strings. However, sometimes the composer makes life very hard for us, so we, and we cannot switch to use this hand, so we just use another finger, usually the third finger. And we have tremolo bow technique, which is commonly found in orchestral pieces, especially when brass gets all the fun parts and you don't have the melody. Um, we do this using the tip of the bow. Um, and yeah, we help also have different fingering techniques which can change the way how sounds produce. We have violin harmonics, which is a very tricky thing. And how you want to do this is you put your finger very lightly on the string and you just go. You're not pressing down, but it produces the same sound. Um, we also have rubato, which is when you move around your finger to create. <laughs> okay, so rubato, and yeah, we use, do this using our left hand, and our right hand does the same thing. how a sound is produced. So vibrations from the string is transmitted to the top plate and the bottom plate through the bridge and reverbs the hollow body producing a rich and beautiful tone characteristic of the violin. So if you slice the violin apart, like how they did in the images over there, you can see the top and bottom plate. And this complex movement of the string of the strings is transmitted to the body by the bridge, which is this piece of wood. Um, the bridge transmits the vibration to the top plate of the violin using the fundamental movements, one in which it pushes down on the top plate alternatively at the foot at the same time, and the other by which it both be put down um, on the top plate simultaneously. Now we have the history of the violin. As I said before, the violin has been, a long, has been here for a very long time. And they were played by, widely in Spain and France in the 15th century. Near the Middle Ages, there was a string instrument in Europe called the fiddle. And in the East, the violin, our fool, is also relatives of the violin. And compared to its ancestors, there's not major changes in the violin. And um, unfortunately, we aren't able to recover the very first violin made, but the picture on the very left is the oldest one that we can find. Yeah, here's some famous composers and violinists. Um, so starting off to the left, we have Paganini, a very good showman, Pablo de Sarce, and Bach, because always, we always come back to him. Um, Paganini is, Paganini's pieces are very difficult because he loved being the star of the show and composing pieces that he could only play by um, at that time. 
And Pablo de Sarce is known for his comic fantasies, and Bach is a very intelligent musical man. Um, yeah, she was a famous violinist, Hilary Hahn, and she won many Grammys for being the best chamber music um, and small ensemble performance, and best soloist, best performance with orchestra, and best classical album. And yeah, she gave demoing for us today. Um, so I'll also be doing a live demo, and this is a variations on the theme of Moses, and one of Paganini's most famous and often performed, uh, often his most famous piece. And Paganini loved, as I said before, to make pieces for himself only. A lot of composers also did that, but they soon realized that they wanted to be known for their music, so they decided to change their pieces into easier ones. Um, so. This most fantasy is his one of his greatest works, and most of it is on the G strings because he liked to cause problems for future violinists. Um, so yeah, I might not be able to do justice to this piece today, but I will be trying my best. <laughs>